Why red hair is so common in Irish and Scottish DNA. If you've never noticed, natural red hair is actually very rare. It is so rare that only two out of a hundred people have it, but travel to Ireland or just step into Scotland. And suddenly it feels like every street you turn has a redhead. And what makes that difference is in their DNA. One gene called MC1R determines if the child will be a redhead or not. One version could give you brown hair color, another could give you black. Then a different version could take a different turn to give you copper, auburn, or even strawberry blonde. So the question is, why Irish or Scottish DNA? For most people with the MC1R gene found on chromosome 16, it is involved in the darker shade called eumelanin, which gives the typical black and brown hair. But when the MC1R gene doesn't follow the usual hair color recipe, it leads to more of a lighter pigment called pheomelanin, and that's where red hair comes from. Strange enough, it's actually not just one single redhead gene that causes this change. There are several different versions of MC1R, and depending on which ones you inherit and how they play together with other genes, your hair could come out as a bright red copper, a soft strawberry blonde, or even a deep auburn that looks brown indoors but glows red in the sunlight. That's why in the same family, one kid can have bright red hair while their brother or sister has plain brown. But the story of the genetics of red hair didn't suddenly happen in this day and age. When scientists studied ancient DNA, they found that Neanderthals, who are our distant cousins who walked the earth thousands of years ago, also had their own versions of red hair mutations. But their red hair genes weren't exactly the same as ours. Scientists believe that some Neanderthals probably had pale skin, freckles, and reddish hair tones, much like modern redheads, but their look came from a slightly different genetic makeup. For Neanderthals, this probably had a survival advantage in northern, colder, and cloudier climates, since lighter skin helps soak up more vitamin D from weak sunlight. For modern humans, the same kind of benefit may have helped the red hair variants survive and spread in Europe, especially in places like Ireland and Scotland. So when you see someone with red hair today, you're looking at a rare gene in human history. But just how rare is it? And why do certain parts of the world seem to have so many more redheads than others? Well, red hair is so rare that out of every hundred people you pass on the street, only about two will have naturally red hair. But this fact gets a lot more interesting when you zoom in on certain places. In Scotland, redheads are everywhere. In fact, there are as many as 13 redheads out of every 100 people. Ireland follows close behind at around 10%. Walk through Dublin or Edinburgh, and it can feel like the land of redheads, but there's a reason for this. When millions of Irish and Scottish people left their homelands during the last few hundred years, they carried those red hair genes with them. That's why today you'll easily spot many redheads in places like Boston, Toronto, and Sydney. Most people expect to see red hair only in Celtic countries, but then you hear about places like the Udmurt Republic in Russia, where red hair shows up more often than you'd think. You can literally be in the Russian forests and suddenly spot the same striking copper hair you'd expect in Galway or the Scottish Highlands. It makes you realize red hair is global, so it shows up in unexpected places. And that leads us to an even bigger question. Why exactly did Scotland and Ireland, of all places, become the true home of red hair? The simple answer is that red hair didn't just appear in Ireland and Scotland by magic. The more interesting answer is that it actually survived there because of a mix of chance, history, and even survival needs. You see, one major reason for this is something scientists call genetic drift, which is basically when rare traits get locked in just because the population is smaller and more isolated. On islands like Ireland and Scotland, where people weren't constantly mixing with outsiders for hundreds of years, those rare red hair versions of the MC1R gene had room to stick around and grow in number. Then history added to this. Celtic groups already had some of these red hair genes, and when Norse settlers arrived and intermarried with the natives, concentration got even stronger. Then there was the need for survival. Red hair usually goes hand in hand with fair skin, which absorbs vitamin D more easily in cloudy northern climates. So what looks like just a flashy hair color may have actually given people a tiny edge in surviving places where sunshine was scarce. Because red hair is so hard to miss, people have been noticing it and talking about it for thousands of years. 
The Roman historian Tacitus, way back in the first century, wrote about Celtic tribes in Britain and pointed out their reddish hair. That simply means redheads were being singled out in records nearly 2,000 years ago. Sadly, the attention redheads have gotten hasn't always been kind. Throughout history, red hair was an easy target of myths. Some cultures linked it with bright energy, passion, and strength, while others turned it into something else entirely, saying it was linked to bad luck, danger, or even witchcraft. It got so bad that in the Middle Ages, having red hair could get someone accused of sorcery. And if you know even a bit of history, you'll know that that was a dangerous label back then. Thankfully, times have changed. Today, instead of being feared, red hair is admired for being unique and rare. There are even festivals like Redhead Days in the Netherlands, where thousands of people with ginger hair gather to celebrate what once made their ancestors stand out in a very different way. With that change, the story of red hair has moved from myth to science because what's really happening inside the body of a redhead goes far beyond just what you see on the outside. For starters, scientists have found that redheads often feel pain differently from everyone else. For example, some studies show they might need extra anesthesia to fully go under during surgery, almost like their bodies are more resistant to the usual doses. But at the same time, there's another side to this. The same redheads can be more sensitive to certain painkillers like opioids, which means the medicine works on them more strongly than normal. And that's not the only strange medical discovery regarding redheads. Because their skin is usually lighter and filled with pheomelanin instead of the darker eumelanin, Redheads burn in the sun faster. That's why they have a higher risk for skin cancers like melanoma. But there's a strange advantage to this. In cloudy northern climates where sunlight can be scarce, redhead skin can sometimes produce vitamin D more efficiently. But here's where things get even more interesting. Remember the MC1R gene we mentioned is the reason redheads have that hair color? Well, it's not working alone. Red hair is what scientists call a polygenic trait which simply means more than one gene has to team up to make it happen. MC1R might be the star of the show, but it gets backup from other genes like TYRP1, ASF, and HERC2. These control how much pigment your body makes and what exact shade you end up with. That's why one redhead might have deep auburn hair that almost looks brown in the shade, while another has strawberry blonde so light it looks golden in the sun. This mix and match system is why no two redheads look the same, and it's also why the story of red hair is more complicated than one ginger gene. With that in mind, it makes sense to ask, where is this trait headed in the future? And is there any truth to the idea that redheads are slowly disappearing from existence? That makes a pretty good headline, but it's not true at all. The MC1R gene that determines red hair is recessive, which means you need two copies, one from each parent, for the red color to actually show up. If only one copy is passed down, the red hair doesn't just vanish. Instead, it kind of hides in the DNA, waiting for another chance. That's why a family with no obvious redheads for generations can suddenly have a child with bright auburn or strawberry blonde hair. Far from going extinct, the gene is traveling across the world behind the scenes, through families, marriages, and migrations, always ready to reappear when the right mix comes together. To stay updated on more ancient history and recent impressive DNA analyses on ancient history like this, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next videos. We hope to see you in the next one.